right, so this is the first card that we're gonna do for this class, and the very first step is to die cut our pieces. I'm using this die set here from Sizzix, and I am going to first die cut my Wiseman piece. Now, the part that I'm die cutting is more than we're gonna actually use for the card. There's two different parts on there. Um, I've chosen the part that I want to have on the card. You can choose to have the same as me, or you can choose a different part. One second, now we'll get it out of the thing there. So I chose these back ones here. You could chose, choose this guy here. Um, so your choice and what part of the die you want to use. And now we're going to die cut our star. And I am die cutting them out of um, some gold cardstock. This gold that I have isn't really, really shiny and mirrored. You could choose it to be super shiny if you want. I liked it. A little bit of a matte gold. So move the die over there, get machine out of the way. All right, now I have my die cut piece here that I'm going to put to the side. This piece here, don't get rid of it because we are going to need it. Now where did, there it is. So I've got a piece of cardstock here that is going to be my back. And what we're gonna do with this piece here is I'm going to place where I want my star to be. And I'm going to just lightly, and I'm only, I'm not outlining the entire thing, but I'm just putting some pencil marks where I want my star to be, and you'll see why in just a second. So I know exactly where I want my star to be. So the first thing that I am going to do, we can put that aside, we don't need them right the second. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some yellow ink, and I'm going to ink right behind where the star is so that it looks like it's emitting light. Start off light-handed, you can always um, increase your pressure, but if you start off too heavy-handed, you can't go back and take ink off. So better, uh, better to err on the side of caution and um, have less ink and need to apply more. So now I'm going to go with a light blue and I'm going around that yellow there. So the blue that I'm using is weathered wood, so it's kind of a blue-gray color. And right now it looks a little bit dirty, but it's just to transition to the darker blue colors. And now I'm using a darker blue. Get my dark blue blending brush. And I'm using, whoops. If you get lines like that, you can easily blend them right away. If you let them dry, it's a little bit harder. And that's another um, good reason to start light-handed because if you start light-handed, there's gonna be less ink there for you to cover up if you happen to have those streaks in there. Now this part here, I don't necessarily need to color, color but I do need to color the sides because our trifold part is slightly narrower than our cardstock here. The cardstock here that we're working on is four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the size of a card. But for the trifold card or trifold part, I um, used a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and scored it in thirds. So that's four inches once it's scored. So it's just slightly shorter. You could make this card to match that if you wanted to, but I kind of liked having that um, blue thing framing the sides there. You just want to make sure that you get it lower than where your hills are going to go. And I like it a little bit mottled because if you look at the night sky, it's not completely solid color. So I like to have a little bit of, um, I don't like it to be all one color. The next one I'm using is a, just a dark blue and it's just going to go around the edges just to give it a little darkness and to frame it in. And 
once you have that as dark as you want, you can put your inks to the side. We need to heat set this because there are resins in the ink and um, we are gonna emboss these stars onto the background. If I were to go do that right now, the ink, even though it seems like it's gonna be dry really, really quick, the ink, the resins in the ink are actually still wet. So it's going to hold on to the embossing powder and I'm not gonna get the stars, I'm gonna get embossing powder over the whole thing. So we're gonna heat set that. I'm just using my heat tool. And it doesn't take too, too long. And that what this also does is also heating your heat gun up for when you emboss. This particular heat gun is a little bit um, more delicate with embossing. It takes a little bit longer, but once you have your heat gun heated, that tends to take a little bit of time away from it too. So rather than just doing my stars and um, embossing right on here, what I'm gonna do is I have a embossing buddy I don't, or there's different companies that make these. They're called different things with the different companies. I'm just spreading that on there just to make sure that I don't have any wet ink on there. And then I am taking a star stencil. You could also use a star stamp if you want, but what I'm trying to do is avoid embossing stars right where my big one is gonna go. So I'm just inking with an embossing ink through that stencil. And typically I would have a piece of paper under here so I'm not getting embossing ink right on my surface, but I forgot that step, but that's okay. So now we're gonna put our embossing powder on there. Tap the excess away. If there are stars where you don't want them, just take a soft brush and just brush them away. I like how these have turned out, so I'm gonna put my embossing powder in my jar here and emboss them. So if you have a heat gun that is um, one of the two heat guns, it does emboss a lot quicker than this heat tool here. So there is, there is a reason to have both of them. When you're starting out, you tend not to have all of the tools and tend to just stick to the ones that you need or use the most. But if you get to a point where you're doing lots of ink drying and you're doing embossing, it's nice to have both of them. All right, I'm gonna let that cool for a second and then we're going to ink and emboss the sides. All right, we're ready to ink and emboss the sides. And I've actually done two of them just so they had time to cool down before doing the top one. I'm only doing the two sides and the top simply because the bottom is gonna be covered by the tri-fold um, anyways, so I don't need to do that. This is the other heat gun I was talking about. <laughs> See how it embossed just so much quicker. The other thing I wanted to mention is I'm using a Versamark pad as my embossing ink. I have a dirty pad and a clean pad. I'm using the dirty one for this because if any of that blue link ink lifts, I don't want it on my clean pad, as well as when I was pushing through the stencil, I don't wanna get some blue ink on my clean pad. So that's why I'm using my dirty one and I just write right on top of it that it's stained. So my next, my last step for this background is just to glue on my star and then we're ready for the next step. We'll see you in the next video.